Hi guys, welcome back for episode number 89 of the weekly playback. Sorry, I've been gone for so long. I picked up something at PAX Unplugged, which I did not want to pick up and that is COVID. <laughs> so that was my second time having COVID and it completely wiped me out. Even though I had a booster shot back in October before Essen, um, this bout of COVID was way worse than the first time I had it. And yeah, I was just completely miserable for a whole week and did nothing but sleep for a whole week. I still have a residual cough, so I do have tea with me today because yesterday I tried shooting this video and I just kept on having uh, coughing fits and I was like, no one is going to want to watch this video. So I will be drinking tea throughout this video, trying to uh, soothe the residual persistent cough that I have left over from COVID. Um, but this video, since I am, you know, still feeling a bit fatigued um, and just not fully, you know, 100% yet, um, I'm just going to do a PAX Unplugged haul video. I'm not going to um, talk about gameplay, even though I played a lot of games in the last few weeks now. Now there's so many to discuss, but I hope uh, next week I will be better and we'll actually discuss gameplay because there are so many games that I'm really excited to talk about, actually, but I'm just going to wait until next week and this is just going to be a PAX Unplugged haul video so and then also some other games that came recently um, but yeah so let's just get into the games that I got at PAX. So I am going to start with games that I purchased. Um, so the very first game I purchased at PAX Unplugged was the game that I was most excited to pick up actually. And that is Santa's Workshop from Elf Creek Games. Um, I was really excited to pick this up because I really wanted a heavier Christmas themed game. Like I feel like all the Christmas themed games I have are pretty light. Um, they're like mostly like set collection games. I just wanted something a bit more substantial that I could play around Christmas time. And this game has both a basic version which is for family and then a more advanced version and it actually comes with two rule books. So and I also wanted to pick it up at PAX so that I could choose my own number because the first printing has only 4,000 copies in it so I was looking for a number that I would like which I know maybe is silly but um, I picked number 1200 so I found number 1200 there which I thought was amazing 1200 out of 4,000 and I really like the number 1200 because 12 12 days of Christmas is the 12th month so it goes with the theme of the game and generally I like the number 12 because it actually has religious significance for me being a 12er Shia which is what I'm called so we're I'm Shia Muslim and I'm a 12 or Shia so um, the number 12 is also important to me for that reason so um, I know it's silly but anyway I was excited to find the number 1200 and pick that up um, I did realize after the fact that my um, box is a little bit damaged in the back it's like a little bit oh here it is I was trying to find where it was damaged um, but oh well I don't know if that it was like that when I picked it up or I caused it myself who knows likely I caused it myself knowing how klutzy I am so anyway so here are the two different rule books so one for advanced one for not advanced oh and I have to show you the inside of the box because when I opened it up I thought it was so incredibly gorgeous like I absolutely love the black and white artwork it's just just really stunning I absolutely love the inside of the box <coughs> so I already assembled the sled I think uh, cards fit perfectly in here so maybe it's just meant for cards I don't know um, there is a promo I just won't show that right now I do wish that this was wooden uh, this tree I think it would have been really nice if this was wooden but oh well um, there are a bunch of different components I guess I won't show you all of them but I will show you the different player pieces um, so this plays up to five players so here are the gold pieces and I will pull out one of the um, uh, I'll pull out a couple of them to show you the um, ornaments because I think that the ornaments are really cool um, I do wish that they were wooden as well but they have this cool like they all have like, this like, cool holographic thing on them so each player has ornaments in their own color and they have those cool holographic things on them which is really nice there's a lot of stunning components in this game um, and here are some other pieces there's like a little pink fairy there <coughs> let me just show you some of the there's like a whole bunch of different wooden components there's some shiny stuff here um it comes with a little bag which i just stuck the coal in so i stuck coal pieces in there i actually don't know what goes in there but there are plastic coal pieces so i stuck those in the bag i will show you some of the cards So yeah, I'm super excited to play this. Like I love Christmas time. I just um, 
kind of celebrate it more in a secular kind of way, not religious, um, but I do enjoy Christmas. I just think it helps, uh, you know, with the winter months, it helps the winter months pass by more quickly because, uh, you know, otherwise I feel like winter would just be long and dreary and I love seeing Christmas lights. I love going around and just driving around and looking at Christmas lights. Um, so here is the board. It is double-sided, um, so I don't know if one side is meant for the advanced and or maybe it has to do with player count, but they look the same, so I'm not going to really show you the other side. They look generally the same. Um, and here are the player boards. So there are different player boards for the different player colors, and these are double-sided and they look do look different on both sides. So I think that those might have to do with um, which version of the game you play. And then the inside of the box, the bottom, just looks like that. So yeah, I am super excited for this game. Um, I've seen a number of reviews uh, about it already and it seems like people are really enjoying it. I don't know who, like I've never played any games from this designer before, Keith Ferguson, but I know that it was developed by Paul Solomon who is the designer of Honey Buzz, which I absolutely love. Um, so I am really looking forward to playing this. So yeah. So this was the first game that I purchased at PAX Unplugged. And then I purchased a couple of games from All Play. <coughs> so let me just get some tea. So I purchased a couple of games from All Play. So one of the games I purchased from All Play is Pollen, which is a Rainer Knizia game. I actually did end up playing a four player game of this at PAX Unplugged and I thought it was quite light. Um, I think that this is a game that would be really great for me to introduce to my mom um, because I'm always trying to get my mom to play games but she doesn't play like a lot of heavier stuff. She has played Azul and she kicks butt in Azul actually um, but sometimes she just really doesn't want to like learn a lot of rules. This has a very simple rule set but I think it'll still keep her mind active so I'm always trying to get my mom to play more board games with me uh, just to try to stave off dementia so this is a game that I think I will introduce to to her because um, after having played it with a bunch of gamers at PAX Unplugged, uh, we all felt it was kind of lacking for us. Like it was just a bit too simple and there were things that we would have changed about it, but I'm not gonna go into gameplay, but I will discuss the things that we would have liked to have changed if we were to uh, redesign the rules. So I purchased the upgraded components. The only reason I bought this game was because I saw it on a table and it just looked stunning with these upgraded components. And so I just bought it because of these, these just absolutely stunning components. I think these are like acrylic or something. I don't know what material they are, but these are the upgraded ones. Um, the non-upgraded ones are just cardboard, of course, so I'll just show you. <coughs> and then um, every edition comes with these nice wooden meeples, which are really cool. They're shiny, so all of them are shiny. So there's a couple, there's a bunch of bees, um, there's a bunch of these beetles. So yeah, so on the table, this game just looked stunning with the upgraded components and these shiny pieces, and these are butterflies. And then um, there are a bunch of these cards in different player colors, so I can just show you. So each person is gonna have their own set of player cards and you're going to be putting these down. Um, but yeah, so just a bit of a simpler game, but i um, excited to try this with my mom. So hopefully she will like it. So yeah, so I purchased the upgraded components for this. Um, so that was one of the all play games I purchased. The other all play games I purchased are um, Sale. So as you guys know, I am a huge Weberson Santiago fan. He is my favorite board game artist. This I believe is a two player asymmetric trick taking game. And of course I again uh, purchased the upgraded components. <laughs> Um, there is this board, which is I think is like a round tracker and scorekeeper maybe. Um, and then there's a bunch of different pieces that you're gonna stick together. I don't know how it plays yet, to be honest. Um, I've never really looked into how it plays in detail, but I am super excited to try it, just because I, you know, do like trick-taking games and um, huge Robertson Santiago art fan. So of course, because it's Weberson Santiago, I went ahead and sleeved all the cards, uh, just to, you know, keep them in really tip-top shape. One of my complaints about all play games is that the boxes are always so small and uh, it's really hard to fit in stuff 
into the box, especially if you sleeve and especially if you buy the upgraded components. So my only gripe is like if they know they're going to be selling upgraded components for every game that they make, which they basically do, I think for every game they make, they sell upgraded components. Like why do they not make the box big enough to fit everything in it? Like you know you're going to have these upgraded components, so please make the box bigger. Like is that too much to ask for? I don't know. So yeah, so I um, um, <coughs> got some promo cards. So I just stuck those in a separate baggie. And then um, I don't know which ones. I think these come with the regular game. So I think those are not upgraded. But I believe that uh, these I think are all upgraded pieces. I think just different wooden components. And again, just and then these are not upgraded, these cardboard components. Um, but again, just super hard to fit into the box. Like that was really just my complaint about their games. And then the box is obvious the lid is not going to close all the way because, um, yeah. And then another game I purchased from them is Mindspace. So again, I purchased the upgraded components. So the upgraded components of this game include these bigger dice that ha are textured and they have the numbers printed on them like that. And it includes an extra set of markers. Um, otherwise, the game comes with these dice with uh, the pips on them. And then of course, one set of markers. Um, so this is a flip and write game. I do like the art um, style in this game. It's just different, you know, it's just cool. So I do enjoy flip and write games, and this is one that can be played solo, which is why I was really excited for this one, um, just because flip and write games and roll and writes are games that I enjoy playing solo. So, so yeah. <coughs> so these were actually all the games that I purchased at PAX, and now I will show you a bunch of review copies. So sticking with all play. So. These were the games I purchased, but I did get some review copies from All Play as well. So I will start with the review copies from All Play. So the first one I will talk about is Couture. So I actually played a three player, no, four, no, five player game of, I don't know why it was really hard for me to remember. I played a five player game of this two nights ago actually and just really enjoyed it. Um, so I received the game as a review copy, but then I purchased the uh, deluxe components myself. So the deluxe components come with these bigger magazine tiles, which are like scoring tiles at the end and they have like the holographic printings on them. So those are part of the deluxe um, components. And then also part of the deluxe are these wooden um, dividers for the different cities. Um, otherwise there's cards that you would be using for that. So let me just show you some of the artwork. <coughs> so, so this is an auction, not auction, uh, bidding game. Um, so it's a bidding game and you are bidding on different kinds of cards, which will be like set collection cards. You may be bidding on other bidding cards and so on. Um, again, I'll talk about this when I, you know, in another video, I talk about gameplay and stuff like that. Um, but it is an interesting game. And then there's just more cards with more artwork and stuff on them. So I'm not going to show all of them. So this was a review copy, except for the, um, deluxe components, which I purchased myself. Um, but again, this is a game that if you sleeve, I do not think it's going to fit in the box. So yet again, um, that's a complaint I have because like, look at this, like there's like hardly any room and sleeved cards, you know, it like almost like doubles them in size. So, um, so yeah, sleeved cards are not going to fit in this box. Um, and then another review copy I got from them is nine lives. And again, I purchased the upgraded components myself. So the regular game comes with these cardboard cats, but I went ahead and purchased the wooden cats because they are so cool. And I love cats, so how could I not? So yeah, there's... And this one, so he, he lies down upside down. And there is, I think they're supposed to, is that it? No, there should have been, I thought there was five cats, no? Oh, no, just four cats. Interesting. Okay, just four cats. So I actually ended up playing a three player game of, of this the other night as well. Um, so this is a trick taking game. It doesn't, you know, the twist in this is not super twisty. It's just a little bit of a twist, but very basic trick taking game with just a tiny bit of a twist in how you, uh, you know, uh, predict how many tricks you're going to win. Um, and the twist comes with a rug, like in how you place your cats in predicting how many uh, tricks you're going to win. Otherwise, super basic trick-taking game. So yeah, 
So this was a game that I received a review copy of, but again, purchased the upgraded components myself. And then finally, <coughs> the last review copy I received from All Play is Habitats. I'd heard a lot about Habitats, so I really wanted to get this game. And again, I purchased the upgraded components myself. I played a five player game of this. Was it five or six players? Uh, whatever the maximum player count was. Five players. I played a five player game of this at PAX Unplugged, really enjoyed it. Again, complaint, um, the box, even without the upgraded components in this box, this box is really small. Like, I think you would have to store the tiles outside of the bag in order to close the lid properly, but you have a bunch of different tiles with cool animals on them and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, it's gonna be hard to show you all of them. And you're supposed to like shuffle them in the bag and then pull them out of the bag when you're playing, but it's really hard to shuffle them in the small bag. Like the bag needed to be way bigger if you actually want to shuffle the tiles in the bag. So I think the next time I play, I'm just gonna use the lid and just dump all of the tiles in here and give them a good shuffle in here first. Um, and then there's just a bunch of different components, like different tiles and stuff like that. I'm not really gonna go into how it plays right now, but I will just show you the Jeeps. So here's an example of a Jeep. Um, so yeah, and then just some uh, cardboard components. I will, the upgraded components are really nice. So I'll show you those. The upgraded components are totally not necessary. They just add and like, uh, just are just gonna make your game look a little cooler, I guess. Um, <coughs> So I actually stuck the upgraded components in this box, which is an expansion box for our dreamscape. So I always keep expansion boxes just because I feel like they come in handy at some point and they totally came in handy for this. So the upgrades are just these really cool uh, animal meeples in different colors. And when you add uh, tiles to your habitat, you can add these animals on top of the tiles, on top of their matching habitat tiles. And it'll just make your game look cooler. Like again, serves no other purpose than um, just purely aesthetic value. So, but um, when we played this game, I did not yet have these. I actually just went and purchased these the next day. Uh, but when we were playing it, we saw at a table next to us that people had these and they were using them. And I was like, oh, that looks really cool. So again, they serve no actual purpose in the game except to just make it look nicer. So those were the review copies from all play. So now let me show you uh, this one game that I was super excited about. This is a game that I actually wanted to get at Essen, but I managed to get a review copy of it here at PAX Unplugged, and that is Amalfi. Now actually, funny enough, this is published by Silex, and that box I just showed you guys for Dreamscape, um, Silex is also the publisher of Dreamscape, which is a game that came out years ago. I don't remember now, maybe four or five years ago. Um, worker placement game, really cool game. Um, so Silex is the publisher of Amalfi Renaissance and I really wanted to pick this up at Essen but I did not get a chance and bringing games back from Essen it was really difficult so I managed to get a review copy of this at PAX and I'm super excited about that. So um, let me just show you some, so here is the, uh, the box. <laughs> Player board and it is dual aired. So there's a bunch of different player boards for the different players. And then this is the main board, which is also dual layered and very cool. Really nice. I re I'm really excited to try to play this soon. Um, and then there are a bunch of different components. Like there's a bunch of these different kinds of like tiles. So I'm not gonna like show you all of them, but there's like a whole bunch of them. Um, and then the different player pieces screen printed wooden meeples and stuff really nice and then let me just show you some of the cards um you know it's a different art style some people have commented that they really don't like the art i like i like it i think it's cool it's different you know it's nice to see different kinds of art styles and board games like i get sick of seeing the same thing over and over which i know may seem um hypocritical since i do love weberson santiago's art and people might say that his style is the same over and over and that's fair enough um yeah so yeah, so this is Amalfi Renaissance. So this is a second edition of a board game, actually. Let me just show you the inside of the box. So it looks like that. So yeah, so super excited to give this a go. Like really excited for this. So I think that this is like the review copy that I was the most excited to get at PAX Unplugged. Um, so that I got from uh, R&R Games Incorporated. Um, so 
Silex was not at PAX, it was R&R &R Games. So I think that they're like a distributor for Silex games in America, maybe. Um, so two review copies that I picked up um, that I got from uh, Zulu's board game. So they're a board game store located in um, Washington State. And they are usually off to the side of the uh, first look section and they sell a lot of the games, which you can play in the first look section. Uh, <coughs> so, so I ended up playing um, uh, this one game in the first look section, which I immediately went to Zulu's to go and buy. And um, the guy who knows me from Zulu's, he was there. So he actually ended up giving me uh, two review copies instead. Um, so I ended up getting those. So I'm just gonna show you those in a minute. So the first review, this is the game that I played in the first look section on Sunday and I absolutely loved it. I played a game from this publisher a couple years ago at PAX Unplugged and that was called like 1920s something. It had to do with 1920s and a speakeasy, something like that. This is called 1902 Melis and uh, that's French and I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, this is a small worker placement game um, and I absolutely loved it seriously love this game um, and I will talk about how it plays in my next video but here is the board um, you can make everything fit when it's sleeved but you have to remove the insert so I sleeved a bunch of the cards so there are these like movie stills and you it's a worker placement game so the back side shows it um, in black and white and then during the game you might have the opportunity to color it uh, so in this game you're basically just trying to movie scenes and then uh, string them together to get points. Um, different player components, very basic player components, like just they just look like little pawns. And then there are some more cards and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I will discuss how this plays in my uh, next video that I shoot. So this was a review copy from Zulu's. Um, and then another review copy they gave me is Tucana Builders, which I know absolutely nothing about, <laughs> but uh, they wanted to give this one to me as well. Oh, sorry, it was upside down. Tucana Builders. Um, it's funny because like literally the day or day or two before they gave me this game, I had a dream that I had a toucan in it. And I don't know why I had a dream about a toucan, but I did. Um, so yeah. Then just a bunch of different... I don't know if these are player boards or like the main board and just different variants and then just a whole bunch of tiles which I stuck in the center and then you can like lift this up and there's like other components and stuff there. And I think on this side I think that there's cards on this side. Uh, no, there's like these buildings. <coughs> so no idea how this plays but this was a review copy from them as well. So maybe I will get around to playing this at some point in time. And then another review copy. Let me just shove this over. This one's a bit bigger. So a review copy that I was super excited to get is from Inside Up Games. So not that I'm not a, I don't actually even watch South Park. I've never been a fan of South Park, whatever. Um, but a few years ago, uh, Trey Chambers, I guess he is the designer of South Park, or not designer, the creator, I guess, of South Park. Um, he was on the Dice Tower and he mentioned that his all-time favorite game, I guess it's his all-time favorite game, is Summit from Inside Up Games. And then that game was just super popular and was like sold out and it was just impossible to get. And I've been wanting a review copy of it for a number of years. So I finally got a review copy of Summit at this PAX Unplugged, which I'm super excited about. So really looking forward to playing this. Um, so it comes with different modes, so you can have cooperative or competitive. I would definitely want to play it competitive because I am not a fan of cooperative games. Um, in fact, just the other night I played The Art Project, so there's very few cooperative games I actually enjoy. Um, so, so I would definitely only play this competitively. <laughs> <laughs> there's a bunch of different tiles. Um, there's so many different things in here, so I don't know if I'll show you all of them. But there's like a whole bunch of these different triangle tiles. Um, there are these player boards. And on the back it shows the... Um, the do you call it hiking? If you're climbing a climber. Probably not a hiker, climber. Um, and then just different player components and stuff. There's some dice and stuff like that and just a bunch of different cards. I'm not gonna show you everything, but yeah. 
So just because um, this random person who I don't even know said that this game was his favorite game and then it was just like super popular, just made me really curious to try it. So I'm super excited to try this at some point. So that is a review copy from Inside Up Games. Um, I've actually purchased a number of the games. So like, uh, I don't think I've ever gotten a review copy from, no, I actually did. I got a review copy of City Builders uh, a couple of packs and plugs ago. Um, so that's a review copy I've gotten from them. Otherwise I've purchased a number of their games. Like I purchased Earth and I purchased, um, God, uh, Block and Key. So I have a couple of their games, which I've purchased. Um, okay, let's go on. <coughs> So I stopped. Uh, the only publisher meeting I had at PAX Unplugged this year was with Floodgate Games. Um, so I managed to get a review copy of Decorum, which looks fun. This is a game of passive aggressive cohabitation. Now this I think is actually um, kind of cooperative. So you have your own, I believe, like secret objectives and what you're trying to put in the house. And each person is trying to decorate the house in a certain way, I think. Um, I actually didn't open this before, but there's a bunch of different stuff. Um, so look, I guess there's cards in here. Let's see. So I think based on what I know, you are trying to decorate the house in a certain way. Each person has their own objectives. And you are all just trying to meet your objectives at the same time. <coughs> Sounds like a cool concept. So I would like to give this a go. Because though I think it's cooperative, it still has that element of not having all the information visible to everyone. So that's why I think it'll actually be more enjoyable for me. Like I don't enjoy cooperative games in which you can see everything that everyone has and you, you know, are trying to just do different stuff like just kind of boring to me. But yeah, um, there's like, oh, it opens up. It's a house. So yeah. Um, yeah, there's just a bunch of stuff in here. I'm not going to open it all, but you get the idea. Okay, so, um, yeah, so that was a game I got from Floodgate. <coughs> Another game I got from Floodgate that I'm excited about is Skyrockets. I believe that this is going to be released later this month. Um, or in uh, January, this is a real-time game. I just do want to mention that I am generally not a fan of, uh, um, uh, fireworks because of the negative impact, the effect they have on wildlife and pets that, you know, a lot of animals get scared, a lot of animals end up getting disoriented, leave their homes, a lot of baby animals get abandoned that way, a lot of pets get scared and lost, so I actually don't like fireworks. Um, but this game is about fireworks and it's a real-time game and you uh, have these timers and from what I know, you are just basically trying to beat the timers and trying to just place down certain cards or something like that. Because I actually watched one game of it being played while I was there. So yeah, so this is, and there's like a score pad or something. So that is Skyrockets. So I'll give that a go. <laughs> and then um, the uh, guy at Floodgate, he mentioned that they have like a partnership with PSC games where they are distributing some PSC games. And he wanted me to pick up this. He wanted me to take this one game called Dogfight, which just did not look interesting to me at all. So I asked him for this game instead. I was like, if you really insist on giving me a PSC game, then I would rather have this one than Dogfight because this one seems a bit more up my alley. Um, this one is a an area control game for one to two players. I don't know how you have an area control game that has a solo mode, but apparently you do. I think the board is ugly, um, but I'll show it to you. So I actually, all of the games from this, uh, and part of this line, I thought they were all ugly to be honest. Um, but yeah, so, but hopefully it plays better than it looks in my opinion. So yeah, it has a solo mode and these are like some solo tiles and then some player screens and then some bags. So do not know how it plays. All I know is that this one's an area control game. Um, the other game he was trying to give to me was called Dogfight, which was like a, some war game or something like that and just did not seem up in the alley at all. So I was like, no, I don't even want to play that. So I took this one instead. So hopefully that will be interesting. Um, another review copy, I think that this is the last one in fact, is Go Cuckoo. So I actually played a game of this while I was at PAX Unplugged with two strangers and it was a lot of fun. Um, so this is a dexterity game. So let me just... Uh... <coughs> 
So I actually saw this at Essen and I was interested in it at Essen because one of the people who was also working for Dranda Games picked this up and he was showing it to me and it just looked really cool. And then, um, so it comes with a bunch of different sticks that some of them are double, have different colors on each end and some have the same color on each end and that's relevant. And then there's a bunch of different eggs and then there is this uh, cuckoo bird. So it's a dexterity game in which you are going to actually be using this and you're going to have the sticks in here and you're going to be pulling out sticks and then like laying them across to create a nest and you're going to be placing eggs onto the nest and then depending on whether or not eggs fall or they stay you may end up having to take other people's eggs and so on. Your objective is to just try to get rid of your eggs first and place the cuckoo bird so that it doesn't fall and if you do that then you win. Um, so I actually played this game with two people at Pax Unplugged and it was fun. Um, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun game and I just love the tin that it comes in. It's still just really pretty. So you know I actually enjoyed my play of Nico Jima which I picked up at um, Essen. So I was like you know what maybe I should just have a couple of dexterity games in my collection because why not. So those I think are all the games I actually got at Pax Unplugged. So let me just double check and make sure that I haven't missed anything. Uh, yep I think that is it. So let's just, uh, yeah, I guess this video is not going to be as long as I thought it would be. Um, so I'll show you some other games that have come in recently, but I'm just going to stop so I can drink some tea. So um, a game that I had backed came in recently, and that is the expansion to Hidden Leaders, uh, Forgotten Leaders, uh, Forgotten Legends rather. Um, I'm still missing some of the stuff that I had backed. So I had backed the like tarot cards or whatever. So those are still missing. Um, those need to come in. They said that those would be sent in separately. So yeah, so I enjoyed the base, uh, the regular, the base game of this that I have. So, um, and I'm a completionist, so I decided to back the expansion. Um, so I hope it's good. Um, and then I think that the player board had to be replaced. So this is a upgraded player board, I think. Um, so yeah, so that came in. I had backed this game called Pacific Ocean um, and I just thought it looked really beautiful and it's for one to three players um, and it says it plays in 10 minutes. Um, I think it's like a set collection game, yes, um, where you're attracting different aquatic animals to your sanctuary. Um, so I went ahead and sleeved it and I was so happy that the tin holds sleeved cards. I just wanted to sleeve it just because the cards are just so beautiful. Like I just love the artwork on them. So um, I'll just show you some of the artwork. So, is it upside down? No. Is it upside down? No. So yeah, it's just like watercolor artwork. And I'm just really excited that it plays solo because it's just nice to have small games that play solo. Um, so yeah, so I want to give this a go. So a game that I ordered on Black Friday is uh, an expansion uh, to the Taverns of Tiefenthal. So I ordered this from Amazon. I heard, so apparently this expansion is really good. So I've only played the game once and I really enjoyed my one play of it that I had like more than a year ago now. But I would really like to play it again because I actually have the upgraded components to, uh, I got these like deluxe components uh, to Taverns of Tiefenthal from some website. Um, so I would like to play with my copy someday because when I played with it, when I played it, I didn't play with my copy. I played with someone else's copy, but I have like these upgraded components for this game that I would like to play. <coughs> so just a bunch of different tiles and stuff that I'll need to punch out. But from the reviews I've read, this expansion is really good. And then it comes with a bunch of different cards and stuff. Yeah. So that came in and then a friend of mine, he gifted a game to me recently. Um, so he gifted to me Rolling Heights. <coughs> so I actually um, played this game at PAX Unplugged, I think it was two years ago when they were just demoing it and it hadn't yet come on Kickstarter or whatever. So I remember demoing it um, at PAX Unplugged a couple of years ago. And yeah, and uh, AEG doesn't even send me games anymore, so it was nice of my friend to send this to me. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, 
maybe they don't send me games anymore because I tend to and I end up calling a lot of their games because I end up not liking them as much as I thought I would. Not a lot. I've kept a few. I've kept Whirling Witchcraft. I like Whirling Witchcraft. Um, what else of theirs do I still have? Um, I don't know. I can't think of anything right now. But but anyway, it comes with a bunch of these different cubes that you're going to be stacking on <coughs> top of each other. So in this game, you're... Um, it's a bag builder game with meeples, and I, if I remember correctly, and you're rolling meeples. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, I don't know what these boxes are for. Um, so it's like a city building game, and you're like rolling meeples and then stacking tiles on top of each other, from what I can remember. It's been a while, so I, I really don't know. I'm not going to take out everything, but you get the idea. So yeah, so my friend uh, gifted this to me, which is really thoughtful of him. So I am looking forward to playing a full game of this because, again, I played it a couple of years ago and I don't remember too much about it now. So yeah, so those are the games that I have. I have some other Kickstarters that arrived, uh, games that I had covered for their campaigns, but they are humongous and I did not bring them upstairs. I will show them in my next video. So I'll show those <coughs> in the next video. Um, like one of them is um some japanese game now oh god what was it called it was a a skirmish game i enjoyed it but i do not remember the name of it now so that came in and then um some other deck building game came in that i had covered so i'll show those in the next video um so yeah so uh there's currently no active campaigns that i'm backing <coughs> um, there are a number of games coming up that I'll be covering. Sorry, I know this video must be so annoying to watch. Um, so there are a number of games coming up that I'll be covering, uh, such as uh, The Explorers of Novoria from Dronda Games, which I'm super excited about. I am really excited about that game. I'll be covering the, the new Spires end game, um, which has a like a tiki vibe to it, which looks really cool. So I'm going to be covering that. Um, uh, what else? I think that maybe that's it. For now there's like some other stuff i need to cover <laughs> oh yeah i need to cover sankore which i have a copy of i think i showed that off in a video a couple weeks ago so i need to create an overview video for sankore from osprey games um so yeah so so those are some videos you can look forward to hopefully i hope my cough will be gone by then because oh my god it's gonna be super hard to shoot a, an overview video with this terrible cough <laughs> I guess I can talk a little bit about Packs Unplugged. If I can even talk. Um, so yeah, so this Packs Unplugged, aside from picking up COVID, was great. <laughs> um, it was nice to just have a chill packs. Like I said before, I was gonna have a chill packs where I was not gonna schedule publisher meetings. I was not gonna like attempt to meet with all the publishers to try to get review copies from everyone. Um, so as you can see, my haul this year is much smaller than previous years because I was more intent on just playing games with my friends, which I did, and that was a lot of fun. So I played, you know, games with my friends. Um, I, you know, just enjoyed eating food from Reading Terminal, which is like one of my highlights. I did not get to go to the um, Christmas market at night like I usually do. I did go to the Christmas market on my last day on Sunday, just walked through it during the day because I left early on Sunday because I had like a bit of a drive to get back home. Um, uh, what else? Uh, that one publisher uh, guy I met with who I said I was going to meet with, that was an interesting meeting. Um, he is the owner of a publishing company and he we met at Essen and had chatted briefly at Essen and he wanted to meet for breakfast. While I was at PAX, we met for breakfast and that just did not go how I thought it would go. So he just basically was like, yeah, I see that you're always, you know, finding yourself in, you know, in, uh, you know, with these issues on on Twitter and stuff and I just thought maybe you might want to chat about that it just ended up me being it just ended up me being me venting for like 15 minutes like non-stop just venting to him about how I like how much I despise people in the industry and how hypocritical I think so many of them are and how two-faced and blah 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 it was just me venting and then <laughs> and then he I feel like did not really understand where I was coming from he thought he would but I, I don't think he did and so um, so yeah so that was interesting so um, when we parted ways we're like okay maybe next time we meet we'll, we can like play a game because uh, he said I was very feisty and yes I can be very feisty um, uh, but um, 
I was like, you know, I a lot of people who meet me, they actually end up, you know, liking me when they meet me in person. Like I actually enjoy meeting people and I enjoy playing games with people. Um, and I was like, I feel like you didn't get to see that because you just asked me how I feel about certain things that have happened online recently. And so I just ended up venting instead and we didn't really do anything else. We didn't talk, we didn't play any games. We just, it was just me venting. <laughs> so, um, so I was like, you know, so he was like, next time we're at a convention together, we can actually play a game together. I was like, yeah, that would be nice. He did tell me like what, you know, he's heard about me in the industry. And I was like, okay, well, that's interesting. Just hearing from this uh, publisher, this guy who owns a publishing company, which is a pretty, pretty reputable publishing company, like, you know, what he's heard about me and what people, you know, and then he said that one of the, you know, things he's heard about me is that I like to create controversy. And I was like, no, that could not be further from the truth. Like, I don't like creating controversy. Like, I don't like having to point out double standards when it comes to Muslims and Middle Easterners and like, for example, the Palestine cause in the industry. Like, that's not something I want to have to point out. I point it out because it matters to me and I feel the need to point out that there are these double standards in the industry. Do I wish that I um, didn't have to point it out? Absolutely. Like why would I want to spend my time pointing out stuff that only gets me, you know, uh, shit on by so many people time and time again? And he acknowledged that the reason like it's essentially like when Eric Lang, when Eric Lang makes a you know, he, when he posts about something that has to do with Black Lives Matter, no one shits on him. If he like, you know, posts what he views as people in the industry, like being, uh, having implicit biases that they're not aware of when it comes to black people or whatever, or, you know, issues like the Black Lives Matter issue, when he is very vocal and passionate about these issues, no one shits on him because he has clout. I don't have clout in the industry. So when I point out the same things with regards to Muslim issues or Middle Eastern issues like the Palestine cause and point out how people are hypocritical and have double standards, I get shit on and I get labeled as a shit stirrer and I get labeled as someone who likes to create controversy. Like, no, I would rather not have to point this stuff out. I would rather people actually not have double standards. I would rather that people can recognize that they have implicit biases when it comes to Muslims and issues regarding Muslims. Um, but you know, I just get labeled as whatever. So he told me what his media person thinks of me and the impression that he has of me. And he actually told me that this is why I don't get review copies from them, from them because you know, his media person is in charge of that. And you know, because he hired him, he's going to leave him fully in charge of that. So even though he's friends with me and he follows me, um, you know, I'm not going to get review copies from this publisher because, because his media person thinks I'm a shit stir. And, uh, yeah. So I was like, okay, that's, you know, that's interesting. Well, thank you for telling me. Okay. Um, so I have actually backed a game of theirs on Kickstarter before and played it. So I was like, whatever, I don't need review copies. It's fine. You know, publishers who hate me, I will just have to purchase their games myself. So yeah, because there are a number of publishers who have blacklisted me. So that was interesting. Um, while I was there, <laughs> me that I had missed from a couple weeks ago and just reading those tweets I was like wow like you know just people posting shit about me on Twitter that I did not know was being said about me and I was like people really have nothing better to do with their time their time apparently than post shit about people like when I post shit that's not shit like I'm trying to raise awareness about what's happening in Palestine and I'm trying to raise awareness about double standards so like for example Helena Kappel when two years ago when she said that Palestinian lives you know she was upset that I said Palestinian lives matter and she was very much against it and if you listen to the recording which is public and anyone can listen to it she even during the recording says to me like oh like I love the fact that you advocate for animals but this is this is different so like you would rather I just stick to advocating for cats and elephants but saying anything about Palestine lives matter Palestinian lives matter it's like oh no no like you know I don't want you doing that I just want you to sticking to you know talking about cats and dogs and and elephants and I was like are you serious like she like literally showed how Palestinian lives do not matter to her and then here at this Pax Unplugged you have everyone going to their media event, promoting their games. Here is a Zionist publisher who could not care less about the civilians who are being killed by Israel in Palestine and all these people who claim to care about Palestine who are still promoting these games from a Zionist publisher. Imagine if, if, if you know this was about Black Lives Matter. You would not see this double standard. So these double standards do exist when it comes to Palestine and Muslim Muslims. <coughs> but 
when I point it out, apparently I'm just a shit stirrer. Um, but I will continue to point out double standards as they exist in this industry because it's important to me as a Muslim woman. You know, I met some interesting people at the convention. I had talks about Palestine and everything that's going on. I was wearing my kefier. Um, I'll throw up a picture the entire time at the convention just to show my support for Palestine. Um, and I continue to post stories on Instagram about Palestine because, you know, it's more than 70 days later and the genocide is still continuing and you still have people in the industry who are completely silent about it. So, you know, just uh, meeting with different people, hearing people tell me what other people in the industry think about me and stuff like that. I was just like, it was interesting, I guess. <laughs> um, but it's just so weird. It's just bizarre. Oh, I don't know. I, you know, I don't know what to make of it anymore. Um, but I just told this dude that I met uh, for breakfast that I will stick around and continue to do what I do for as long as I enjoy being a content creator. <laughs> <laughs> Before does not depend on content creation. So, you know, I can burn bridges. I don't care. I'm going to burn bridges with people who I think are fake who I believe have double standards who I believe are hypocrites like I'm happy to burn bridges with people who I believe do not have integrity I don't care um so you know because we talked a little bit about that and he told me like oh you know some people in the industry see you as someone who just wants to burn bridges like I don't want to burn bridges I'm fine with burning bridges there's a difference I'm fine with burning bridges with people who I feel do not have integrity. Integrity is the most important thing to me. If you are someone who claims to be for all human rights and you show through your actions and through your silence that that is not the case, then I believe you lack integrity. And integrity is the most important thing to me. It's always been so important to me in everything I do in my career. It's, you know, the reason I, you know, all my jobs have had to do with public interest or, you know, representing people who are underprivileged or who, you know, have some kind of issue, um, you know, that they need um, representation for, the, you know, I've always cared about representing those who don't have a voice or don't have as much of a voice as others. Like that's been extremely important to me my entire life. It's, you know, integrity is the most important thing. Like I would not be able to sleep at night if I didn't have integrity. So when I see people in the industry who don't have integrity, they disgust me. Like they truly disgust me. And it's not me trying to create controversy. It's not me trying to be a shit stirrer. I'm happy to burn bridges with people who I feel don't have integrity because I, I'm disgusted by them and like why would I want relationships with those kinds of people and I see a lot of that in this industry like so much of that in this industry like when you are in the industry and you know you have people privately messaging you who don't you know want to say things to you publicly but they you know will support you privately people you learn so much like you you know you hear so much gossip you the things i learn about people in this industry through private messages like just so much stuff like seriously and when you are in the industry like that you realize how fake this industry is and how it's filled with people who are just gross when they, you know, so again, I don't need relationships with people like that because again, I do this for fun. I'm a content creator for fun. I'm not doing this to earn a living. And I think that the reason that there are so many people who don't have integrity are because they are doing this for a living. Like when you have people like Rodney Smith, who in my last video, I discussed his bullshit statement that he released about why he won't say, um, you know, Palestinian lives matter, why he won't call for a ceasefire, you know, this whole statement he made of just excuses for why he's silent about it and he got praised for it. I'm like, that's utter bullshit. But you know why he's silent about it? Because his livelihood depends on this industry and he doesn't want to upset his Zionist creator friends, um, you know, because he gets business from them. So this is, you know, this is the reality of the industry. You're going to have people whose livelihoods are dependent on it and they're going to be two-faced. They're going to be hypocritical. They're going to be, they're going to have double standards and they're going to have a lack of integrity. They're not going to have integrity. And those people disgust me and I want nothing to do with them so I'm happy to burn bridges with those people like you know I can just purchase the games I want to purchase if there's publishers who don't want to work with me and my new job will allow me to actually purchase more games because you know I'm earning more at my new position than I was at my legal aid position so once I pay off some credit card debt I'll have more money than I did before um, 
which is nice and I'm still doing work that matters to me that's important so you know I like to be able to sleep at night I don't know about these people I don't know how they sleep at night but whatever I don't care so yeah so people can believe in shit about me in this industry I don't care um, people who meet me in person they know what I'm like and so uh, that's all that should matter so people who have met me at conventions oh, it was really nice actually there was this one uh, day at the convention where this uh, girl uh, this woman came up to me with her husband and uh, she asked me if I was uh, you know Sarah Shaw from Board Games in a Minute and I said yeah I am and she's like oh and she was just so sweet she's half Persian and she was just so happy to meet someone else like her in this industry who creates content and so for all these people who say that diversity is so important yet they want to shit on the one female Muslim content creator like how many of me are there in this industry? Yeah, all they ever want to do is shit on me because I point out their double standards, but whatever. But this woman was so happy to meet me and she asked me for a photograph and moments like that are still so surreal. Like it's been happening for a few years now where I go to conventions and people, you know, will come up to me and be excited to meet me and they'll tell me that they're a fan of mine and want a picture with me. And I'm like, it's crazy that I have a fan. Like that's just insane. Like that to me, you know those moments those are really nice um when that happens at conventions that's just a really nice moment so that happened at pax unplugged um not once but i think it happened like two or three times where a couple people wanted a photo with me and that was just really really sweet um but especially this woman just because she's half persian and she was just so excited to meet someone like herself and just just so sweet yes ah so that was just a really nice moment um but yeah so that's why i will continue to do what i do so i know i just ramble on a lot but um all that is to say is yeah people can believe what they want about me but as long as I enjoy making content I will continue to make content just to give people like myself a voice in this industry even if it gets me hated because I point out people's double standards and hypocrisy and no one likes that pointed out but someone's got to do it <laughs> so um so yeah so that is that um what else I think that's it uh, I guess I will end this video and I will be back next week and talk about a lot of games that I've played um, and talk about how they play and so yeah so hopefully my cough will be gone by then I hope so sorry if this video was just not you know what you wanted but um, due to my lingering cough and you know and stuff this is what you get <laughs> so anyway so I'll see you guys next week hopefully so until then bye <music>